Welcome to my channel. I am Privet. In this video, I am going to explain you all about tropical cyclones. So, tropical cyclones are one of the biggest threat to life and property. Tropical cyclones are massive, destructive, and deadly storms. Tropical cyclones include number of multiple hazards such as destructive winds, extreme rainfall, flooding, catastrophic storm surge, lightning and thunder, and sometimes tornadoes, especially seen in the US. All of these hazards can individually cause extensive damage to loss of life and property. According to World Meteorological Organization, about 80 tropical cyclones form every year. In the past 50 years, 1942 disasters were recorded attributed to tropical cyclones, which killed at least 7,79,000 people. And the damage that had caused by these tropical cyclones were about 1406.5 billion US dollars. So now in this video I will be covering what is a tropical cyclone, how these tropical cyclones are formed, structure of tropical cyclone, factors responsible for development and intensification of these tropical cyclones what is the difference between typhoon cyclones and hurricanes and at the last we will see few facts related to tropical cyclone so i hope you will watch the entire video and you gain at least some knowledge about the tropical cyclones What is Tropical Cyclone? Tropical Cyclone is a rapid rotating storm formed over warm tropical oceans between Tropic of Cancer in North Hemisphere and Tropic of Capricorn in Southern Hemisphere. They gain energy from warm tropical waters. Tropical Cyclone has low pressure center and clouds spiraling the eyeball bordering the eye which is present at the center of the system. It is an area of a system where the weather is free of clouds and calm. That's the area where the eye is present at the center of the system. The diameter of tropical cyclone normally ranges from 200 to 500 km but in some cases it can reach up to 1000 km wide. Tropical cyclone consists of destructive winds, torrential heavy rains, catastrophic storm surge, thunder and lightning and sometimes even tornadoes. This tropical cyclones in northern hemisphere spins clock anticlockwise whereas in southern hemisphere it spins clockwise tropical cyclones are given name when the wind speed of that storm reaches 63 km per hour now let us see how tropical cyclones are formed the sun rays are vertical towards the tropics means the sun rays are direct towards the tropics as a result the tropics are warm the solar radiation received by the tropics is much more higher than the temperate regions while the sun rays are slanted towards the polar region as a result it receives less solar radiation this is why polar regions are cooler and tropics are warmer. 
so this leads to tropical cyclone formation in the tropics due to the formation of low pressure area we should know that winds move from high pressure area to low pressure area so the winds when the warm air moist air or the oceans water bodies rises upwards the low pressure area is created as there is less air left near the surface now the airs from the surrounding high pressure areas moves into the low pressure area this cool air also becomes moist and warm and starts rising upwards as the air rises upwards it cools because temperature drops with rising altitude and as a result clouds are formed this process continues why the cyclone spins the cyclone spins because of the coriolis effect now due to the coriolis effect the system spins anti clockwise in northern hemisphere because the winds are curved towards the right side in northern hemisphere and winds are curved towards the left side in the southern hemisphere so this causes cyclonic storm to move anti clockwise in northern hemisphere and clockwise in southern hemisphere an eye is formed in the center of the system when the storm system moves faster eye is the region of the system which is calm clear it is a low pressure system area the air above this low pressure area moves down the eye when it cools when these tropical cyclones hit land it weakens as the supply of the warm moist air gets cut cut off however this tropical cyclone move in land dumping flooding rains destructive winds causing loss of life and property now we will understand the structure of the tropical cyclones the warm air over the oceans rises upward so this creates the low pressure at the surface the high pressure systems beside this low pressure system this high pressure systems air moves inside the low pressure system as there is less air left at the surface of the system so this cool air coming from the high pressure area also becomes warm and moist and this also starts rising upwards so this air moves upwards and up to a particular height it cools because as we move upwards the temperatures fall down so this when it cools they forms the cumulonimbus clouds and when this air when this water vapor is trans, transferred to water droplets latent heat is generated so this is the powerhouse of this system it provides the heat to the uh, tropical cyclones so after a particular height these clouds cannot form so they start spreading outwards about several kilometer wide and after that several kilometer period they try to descend this cool air try to descend down this system can go up to 15000 to 18000 meters tall at the center of this system this void you can see 
that is the eye this is the area where the weather is calm clear and the low pressure area after that it is surrounded by eye wall which is the strongest part of the system it consists the destructive winds and the extreme rainfall that is the strongest part of the system and after that several cloud bands are formed this process continues the warm air rises upwards clouds are formed and after several uh, moving outflow outwards this air cools and they again descend down because the density of cool air is high so it comes down and again this flows into the low pressure area and it rises upward so this cycle continues and the cyclones formed and spin and uh, gets more intensified now let us see which all factors are responsible for development and intensification of the tropical cyclone the first is it should be located in tropics from 5 degree north 5 degree to 30 degree north and south of equator second intertropical convergence zone itcz it is a zone or belt of low pressure areas around the equator it moves northward and southward in their respective summers in these areas the tropical cyclone forms third sea surface temperature the sea surface temperature should be around 26.5 degree celsius at least more than that is well and good for the system to develop and it should be it and it should be 26.5 degree celsius at the depth of 50 meter the fourth factor is vertical wind shear the winds which are converging at the surface and the winds which are diverging at the higher levels the wind speed of both either should be equal or less than that if the diverging speed is more than the convergence the clouds cannot form and they will dissipate uh, they will be displaced so the system cannot form so it's an important fifth coriolis effect force this effect is important because the spin moment of the cyclones is due to the coriolis effect sixth high humidity means more moisture content should be available during the system development if less moisture is available the system couldn't develop seventh cloud formation should be rapid means the cloud should form very fast so these are the factors which are responsible for development and intensification of the cyclones So now we'll see what is the difference between hurricanes, typhoons and cyclones. There is no difference between hurricane, typhoons and cyclones. They are just named different in the different regions. In the Atlantics it is called as hurricanes. In Indian Ocean they are called as cyclones in northwest pacific they are called as typhoons now let us see where and when do this tropical cyclone occur tropical cyclone form or occur between 5 degree to 30 degree north and south of equator between tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn it initially move westward and slightly towards the pole tropical cyclone in north atlantic ocean affects usa and caribbean tropical cyclones in the northwest pacific affect 
साउथ ईस्ट एशिया ट्रॉपिकल साइक्लोन्स इन इंडियन ओशन नॉर्थ इंडियन ओशन अफेक्ट्स इंडिया बांग्लादेश ओमान यमेन पाकिस्तान ट्रॉपिकल साइक्लोन्स इन साउथ इंडियन ओशन अफेक्ट्स नॉर्थ वेस्ट ऑस्ट्रेलिया ईस्टर्न आफ्रिका मॉरिशियस एंड मदागास्कर ट्रॉपिकल साइक्लोन्स इन नॉर्थ ईस्ट पैसेफिक अफेक्ट्स कोस्ट ऑफ मैक्सिको एंड ट्रॉपिकल साइक्लोन्स दैट फॉर्म इन साउथ पैसेफिक अफेक्ट्स नॉर्थ ईस्ट ऑस्ट्रेलिया एंड पैसेफिक आइलैंड्स वेन डू दे अक ट्रॉपिकल साइक्लॉन अकर बिटवीन मे एंड नोवेम्बर विथ पीक इन सप्टेंबर इन नॉर्थन हेमिस्पियर एंड इन द साउथन हेमिस्पियर ट्रॉपिकल साइक्लॉन अकर बिटवीन नोवेम्बर टू एप्रिल लेट एस सी फ्यू फैक्ट्स अबाउट ट्रॉपिकल साइक्लॉन्स द स्ट्रॉन्गेस्ट ट्रॉपिकल साइक्लॉन रेकॉर्डेड इन द वर्ल्ड is the typhoon tip it had 870 hpa minimum pressure and peak sustained wind of 305 km per hour it made landfall in southern japan on october 19 and killed about 99 people second The deadliest tropical cyclone in the world is 1970 extremely severe cyclonic storm Bhola. It made landfall in East Pakistan, today's Bangladesh, and India's West Bengal on November 3, 1970. It had a wind speed of about 185 km per hour. and minimum surface level pressure of about 960 mb it killed at least 5 lakh people mostly due to this storm surge it led to the flooding in low lying areas of the ganga delta the costliest tropical cyclone recorded in the world is hurricane katrina and hurricane harvey jointly both resulted in approx 125 billion us dollar economic damage i hope you will have loved this video please like share and comment if you have any questions and don't forget to subscribe to my channel as it gives me motivation and inspiration to bring such videos